Good evening, everyone. I'm Nat. Ko Marie e tifano. I'm Rachel. Um, yesterday, during our All In service, we celebrated Palm Sunday together as we started this journey through Holy Week towards Easter. Now, hopefully, you are able to kind of find some branches to wave and kind of get into it with us as a church. Um, one of our kids ended up waving a pot plant around. Another one waved this kind of cushion around that has like leaves on it. So we kind of exercised quite a bit of creative freedom and license there. Actually, one of our other kids said, Dad, I can't believe you didn't even tell us it was Palm Sunday, which kind of highlights something for us, just how easy it could be with everything that's going on in the world right now and in our own lives to let Easter just kind of pass us by. And that's why we feel it's so important to um, get... And that's why we feel it's so important to set some space aside to journey with Jesus to the cross and beyond. So this evening we're going to use a relatively structured form of prayer and meditation on scripture that picks up where we left off yesterday after Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. There's a depth and a richness to these words that have been prayed by many through the years. If you've never been, uh, done this before, it's really straightforward. The words will come up on your screen. Your bits are in bold, although who's going to know? You could pray anything. Um, and you can either pray them out loud with us or in the silence of your heart. So as we begin, you might like to light a candle to remind you of the light of Christ, which is never overcome by the darkness. Etefano, may the light of Christ be with you. And also with you. And so during this Holy Week, we remember that Jesus' command to love others is made possible by his profound love for us. Actually, we see how many times Jesus could have avoided or changed his fate, but he chose not to do that, embracing the cross and shouting his victory cry to the heavens that all that is necessary has been accomplished as God has once again rescued God's people. So we're going to take a moment to be silent and wait on God. Let's still our hearts, slow down our minds, especially if they're busy, and invite God's presence to be with us as we reflect on the past day. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. Amen. Amen. We're heading into a um, time of confession now. So as we kind of come before God, let us bring to mind all those things that burden our lives uh, and let us lay them before him. God of grace, help us in our failings and in our weaknesses to reach out to you and to rely on your strength and your forgiveness. For accepting life yet living it without you, forgive us, Lord. For living without concern for others, forgive us, Lord. For tolerating oppression and injustice, forgive us, Lord. For turning the world to our own purposes and desires, Forgive us, Lord, for refusing to love and to forgive others. Forgive us, Lord. For all these things, we humbly claim your grace and ask to be made whole. Amen. So know tonight that God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Let's take hold of God's forgiveness and live our lives in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Now we have a reading from Matthew 21, verses 12 to 17. 
Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those who were selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Theologian and writer Rachel Held Evans sums up our reading and the rest of chapter 21 like this. First, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, a dramatic statement with clear messianic overtones that Matthew says put the whole city into turmoil. Then he went and overturned a bunch of tables in the temple before welcoming streams of poor and sick people to replace the money changers that had been dismissed. Later, he cursed an unsuspecting fig tree meant to represent the fruitlessness of those who rejected his message before returning to the temple to engage in a heated debate with the religious leaders there. It had been a very weird 24 hours. What a great way to end that quote. I guess the thing that struck me is this parallel between Jesus kind of flipping the tables over in the temple and how right now uh, a lot in our lives might feel like that too. Things are being flipped and turned upside down, which creates a lot of discomfort. Let's be honest, it's a weird time. And I guess this idea of disruption is really important too in our faith lives. Jesus' disruption may have looked chaotic and was confronting at the time, but was ultimately bringing justice and setting things right. Jesus here is showing us a whole new way of being in the world and what's important to God, this upside down kingdom which brings comfort to the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. So we have a question, well, two questions to reflect on. What might Jesus be stirring up, turning over or disrupting in your life at the moment? And where could he be bringing comfort? So if you'd like, you're welcome to pause us. Um, Get pen and paper or your journal or however you like to do these things. You might want to put some music on for a minute or so and or be quiet and just reflect on those questions. What might Jesus be stirring up, turning over or disrupting in your life and where might he be bringing comfort? And then um, take some time to journal or draw anything you feel the Spirit is saying. Let us pray. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today today I I believe. believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today Today I I believe. believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though I am of anxious heart, today today I I believe. believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe from trials, and now, tried as I am, today Today I I believe. believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today today I I believe. believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today today I I believe. believe. Amen. I'm going to pray um, a short blessing and then we're going to close tonight's evening prayer by listening to the doxology played by Chris. Um, Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Bon marie. 
And so this week, may you find in the cross a sure ground for your faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And as you journey with Jesus this week, may you be reminded again of his total love for you. Take care. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly hosts. Praise Father. Ah. Uh.